Ping pong, according to Athnet, was discovered in the late 1800s when tennis players wanted to evolve the game to play indoors. Little did the founders of table tennis know the impact they would have. This is Najla Imad Lafta. She's only 14 years old and she's damn good. In fourth grade, I realized I was different from the other girls, says Najla, who lives on the outskirts of Bakuba, a provincial capital in Iraq. The reason is this. At roughly 36 months old, most kids begin copying friends and adults or take turns in games. Najla had a far different experience. Najla was three when a bomb magnetically attached beneath her father's car went off. The New York Times reports her father was targeted. Her father would recall to the Times, as I drove up to the house, Najla ran towards me, holding out her arms and smiling. I got out of the car to help her get into the passenger seat, but as she pulled open the door, the sticky bomb exploded. Her experience is traumatizing. Najla said she felt a huge blow. It was like a fire was in my body and I saw my arm fly into the air towards our neighbor's house. The times continued. Her father rushed her to the hospital, but she was losing so much blood, the doctors were not sure they could save her. Ms. Lafta became one of the hundreds of thousands of Iraqis seriously wounded in the civil war that followed the American invasion in 2003. Najla recollects, I was at the hospital three months and once I realized I had lost my legs and arms, I cried and cried and became angry because I knew I had lost everything. Imagine just being born into this world, an active, young, energetic child and having it all taken away. Many have trouble finding their purpose. Najla navigated and found table tennis. Sad that she could not run like her classmates, she bought a table tennis paddle. It quickly proved frustrating because she was right-handed and her dominant hand was gone. Her father's retirement income of $400 a month was beyond the family's reach for prosthetic limbs. Her father had a contact in the table tennis community, a scout, nonetheless, of Iraq's Paralympic team. He said to me, I want you to take that paddle and start training daily, she recalled. And she trained hard and the practice paid off. She was only 12 when she won a place on the country's Paralympic team and the success would continue. The head of Iraq's Paralympic committee said she is from a very poor family and lives in a neighborhood where squatters live and she has only one arm and she is the champion of Iraq and took the golden medal in the Iraqi championship and took the silver medal in Asia. Really, I consider this a miracle. She is one of the 70% increase of Iraqis participating in the Paralympic Games whose injuries are terrorism related. Her movements are fluid, unlike the spotty electricity and unpaved streets in her hometown. In June, she reached new heights, bringing home her fourth silver and her fourth bronze medal from an international sporting tournament for the disabled in Egypt. To continue her success, she travels here once a week to the capital of Iraq, Baghdad, to train at the Paralympic team's training center. She is inspirational, motivational, and a true story of breaking through the barriers that life might throw at us. Continue to track her story and many others and support the Paralympic Games. If you'd like to hear more thought-provoking content like TYT Sports on Facebook and to help in my journey to keep media independent, go to tyt.com Rick.